Today's episode of Wine and Dime is sponsored by Rooted Planning Group, a fee-only financial planning firm that believes life is about events, supported by your dollars and cents. And we want to help you achieve your goals. Hop on over to www.rootedpg.com to learn more about the services. Every week, it's my goal to share financial information that helps you in both your life and financial vineyard. We hope it takes you from your roots to the journey of your vines and the influences in the air that have helped craft your delicious life. Like wine, life and finances have different palettes that should be celebrated and not judged. Welcome back, Wine and Dime listeners. So thrilled to have you here again. We are going to be talking about powers of attorney today. What an exciting topic. But before we dig into that, I want to share with you my journey up to Billsboro Winery. Last episode, we mentioned that that was a place that we were going to go. We had reservations. It was so worth the journey. It was about an hour and a half away from our home, but it was so worth that journey up to Seneca Lake to Billsboro Winery, an old barn that's been converted into a tasting center. Their grounds are extraordinary. I would highly recommend it. If you can't travel up there, visit their website and scope their uh, unique wines out. Now we had one and you know, I'm not a big wine fan or a big white wine fan, excuse me, but we had one called Albino. I think that's how I'm saying it correctly. Albarino. It is a white grape. It was delicious. It was great for us. It is a great summer wine. If you haven't had it, and I had not explore that one a little bit. If you can't find one, uh, go to their website, order and have it shipped to you. Hopefully we can uh, convince you to come to the Finger Lakes if you're not from here, or if you are from here, that you'll go up and visit them. It was definitely worth the trip. My recommendation is to make reservations and you can do a nice little charcuterie board um, because we really, we did not feel rushed. We felt like we could really enjoy ourselves. And the story of the winemaker um, is just, that's a unique, journey for them as well. They, you know, became winemakers because they loved it. Uh, they they dreamed about it and they've been making wine for over 20 years at this point in time. So uh, definitely go to their website, uh, Billsboro Winery, and they're on Seneca Lake. Okay, so diving into the topic that you all have been, you know, sitting on pens and needles waiting to hear about, and that is power of attorney. Before I dive into this topic, just want to remind you, I am not an attorney. I'm not trying to give you legal advice here, just trying to educate you on some terminology that you may have heard and to try to help you understand how it incorporates into your life. You should always seek legal counsel whenever you're thinking about getting legal recommendations. And if you missed it, we this is actually episode five of this series. So we've done episode one was estate planning uh, basics and terminology. Episode two was on beneficiaries, wills, and probate. Episode three was about trusts. Episode four was how you a high level overview, or I gave a high level overview of healthcare proxies. So this episode is digging more into powers of attorney, but just FYI, your healthcare proxy is technically a power of attorney. So healthcare, um, or excuse me, so power of attorney gives someone what is called the agent in the document, a power to act on your behalf. You are considered the principal and it may be either temporary or it may be permanent. There are two types of powers of attorney, financial, and as I already mentioned, that would be a medical or healthcare power of attorney. Now, your healthcare power of attorney is typically always durable, where your financial power of attorney could either be durable or non-durable. What's the difference between durable and durable? Well, power of, uh, durable power of attorney becomes in effect when you become incapacitated and unable to handle your uh, financial matters on your own, or even if it's a temporary basis, where a non-durable power of attorney ends in the event the person becomes significantly incapacitated or um, mentally uh, incapacitated. So most people want their power of attorney to be durable because they want it to go beyond when they're able to make decisions. So for discussion purposes today, we'll just assume that financial power of attorney is durable. But again, if you're looking to know what's right for you, you should talk to your uh, own legal counsel. 
So a power of attorney that takes effect immediately uh, or um, so like, let's say you have a, uh, maybe you have a financial, maybe you have a mental issue or you like a stroke could be a reason and your mental capacity isn't there or you're in an accident, you're not able to make any kind of financial or medical decisions. So that could take place um, immediately or it could be caused by a future event that takes place. Um, so there are things called a springing power of attorney. Usually when a principal can't act for themselves or due to medical or physical disabilities, that's when you want that power of attorney to take place. The purpose of a durable power of attorney is to plan for emergencies, medical emergencies usually, cognitive decline after later life, or situations where the principal is just no longer able to make decisions. And FYI, a power of attorney does not continue beyond a person's life. And that's an important piece of education that I think I've heard people over time say, well, I've got somebody's power of attorney, so I can just make decisions, right, once they're gone. And that is not true. Once a person passes away, you either need to become an executor or if they have a trust, you will become the t- could become the trustee. And they may not be just because you're appointed or name a power of attorney, it's possible that you may not be the trustee or the executor, or you may not, you may decide not to appoint the person as uh, that is your executor or um, trustee as the same person's power of attorney. But again, you should talk to legal counsel about what's right for you. So just a quick reminder, a healthcare power of attorney, this is a durable healthcare power of attorney is critical when medical emergency leaves you incapacitated or unconscious and unable to make choices about healthcare. It appoints an agent to communicate with doctors and makes medical decisions. And then a healthcare power attorney goes further than a living will, which only applies if you're terminally ill or permanently conscious. A financial power of attorney, that's, again, we're talking about durable. A durable financial power of attorney allows the agent to make the business and financial affairs of the principal such as signing checks, filing tax returns, paying bills, and managing investment accounts when the principal becomes unable to determine or make decisions. The agent must carry out the principal's wishes to the best of their ability, at least to the extent that the power of attorney spells out as the agent's responsibility. And a financial power of attorney gives the agent a wide range of power over the principal's financial account including the ability to make deposits and withdrawals, sign checks, and even make changes to beneficiary designations. And while a a durable power of attorney can pay medical bills on behalf of principals, the durable agent cannot make decisions related to the principal's health. So see, here's where you need two separate documents. One is a healthcare power of attorney and one is your financial power of attorney. So it's um, one of the things that the the healthcare proxy can actually, healthcare power of attorney slash proxy can take into consideration is even, you know, taking people off from life support. That is not something a durable financial power of attorney can do. Now, one of the things that we um, often think about when, you know, you're, or I shouldn't say we, but you should often think about is when you're naming an agent is it should be somebody you trust. Integrity is the utmost important trait, not necessarily financial acronym, but uh, definitely integrity. You should also appoint a secondary agent in the case that your primary agent cannot act. And then just to kind of high level some pitfalls, appointing the wrong agent, you know, that could be a pitfall, someone who doesn't have the time, who cannot act in the principal's interest or is simply dishonest. I know that's a given, but if you have a power of attorney and you feel like something might be going on, Again, talk to your legal counsel. Another pitfall would be not appointing a successor agent. Potentially, if something happened to your first one, um, I know like my husband and I, we've appointed each other as power of attorney. So what if we're in a car car accident together or something like that? Then that doesn't work real well. So having a successor is really important. Also not having access to the physical power of attorney, which will have, have to be presented in almost all cases to verify the agent's authority. So if you have somebody named, as your power of attorney, it would be a very good idea to have 
them have a copy of it or uh, I know we left a copy with our attorney so that they would be able to produce it if something happened to us. And then also not having the principal's financial accounts and medical records in order to, to not having access to them in order um, for the agent to be making decisions. That's where that red file that we've talked about in the past comes in really handy. So having a list of all of the financial accounts and medical records or a quit telling somebody where that information at is, is really important. And then finally, certainly not least, but some high level pitfalls that we came up with, not having a durable power of attorney, which expires and is no longer valid if the principal becomes um, incapacitated. So again, that's something that is a pitfall. If you don't have one at all, that can be a real problem because then who makes the decisions for you? All right. Well, that's the high level side of uh, power of attorneys. We will actually have a, uh, a document in the show notes that you can reference uh, other areas to consider when you're uh, reviewing your estate plan. It's just a checklist, some ideas that you might want to think through, including the section under power of attorneys. And we so appreciate you listening to the show today. We hope you enjoyed this short episode. We would love it if you would share this with your friends and rate us on iTunes so that more people can find us like you did. And then I want to give a shout out to TJ Mann at TJ Media. We sure appreciate all the fixes and faux pas that you uh, blend when you're in the production stages. Thanks everybody for listening and stay tuned for the next episode where we talk about a deeper look at your final wishes, a document that we hand out to client called the five wishes. And that will about do it for today's episode of Wine and Dine. You can contact Amy through the website, www.rootedpg.com or amy at rootedpg.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at RootedPG for the latest news. And if you have any questions, comments, or topics you would like to hear about, feel free to let us know. And don't forget to rate and subscribe the show wherever you get your podcasts. And again, thank you for listening and be sure to tune in next time.